Okay, here we are at the site of a new install. And at this house, these are some uh, townhouses here in Bellingham. And we had a gas furnace up in the attic. And so this one was a little bit tricky. Um, when we did the heating loss calculation on the building, we actually found that we were able to get away with a heat pump, but the tricky part was getting electrical up to the attic so that we could have backup heat when it got below a certain temperature. So what we ended up doing is going with this Mitsubishi Hyperheat because we don't need backup heat with this. We have full heating capacity down to five degrees outside. So not a problem. And so this is a little, little bit of a tricky install. You can see our outdoor unit here. It's running right now and heating. Our refrigerant lines had to go up. See that tucked in there to go up into this attic and we actually had to come through the roof we had no option so we had to build a custom flashing and we had to run that speedy channel in a way so that if water does run it runs over the top of our flashing that's all sealed up really nice and it won't leak then the lines run up to that upper attic where our indoor unit is and I'll take you guys inside now. Okay, so up here in the attic, we've got the SVZ air handler. And it's pretty tight up here. The old furnace was just kind of laying on the ground. Um, but yeah, we've got our air handler up here and some new ductwork. We are hanging now instead of sitting on the ground. You can see we've got our pan here with an overflow switch installed. So if we ever get any water, we can shut everything down. And this thing is running at max fan speed right now. We've got a filter in the return air grill so that you don't have to come up to the attic to change the filter. But that is pretty much it. Let's see, it goes back there. It's our refrigerant lines and our condensate line. That is the whole install.